गुड मॉर्निंग Good morning. Let's let's wait for a uh, few minutes to our time. And yesterday, I don't know, like after the meeting or discussion, nobody joined. I waited for ten minutes. Nobody joined back. Okay, this uh, we have created this material yesterday, and we have created the styling thing. So you can uh, the styling uh, thing. And let's see, with the help of this, we can control the styling very easily. Right now, grass and dirt I haven't painted, so it's not visible anywhere. It's all empty. And one more thing I need to add my in my scene is post process. Like this, this is something you have to put in your scene. And make sure if you have a huge uh, terrain or huge landscape, make sure switch on your infinite extent, unbound basically, without the bounding box. It will affect the entire scene. Switch on, nothing happens. Go to exposure, minimum, maximum brightness. Make it one, one. That's it. This is your actual lighting. This is your scene's actual lighting, so you can just control this with the help of this very easily. You can just simply switch off sky. See, and this fog also, if I want, I can control it with all these parameters. You see, we have density, fall off, and all these options. You can manipulate this, and if you want to change the uh, background, you can do that as well. Select any uh, cube map or HDRI map, and it will give you this. You can see effect of this terrain. And if you want to modify delicacy, there by default there are a lot of terrain, a lot of HDRI maps are there. Like to, uh, by default, I guess two, two or three maps are there. So if you want to use anything, you can definitely use it. No exponential height fog. View distance. Volumetric fog. If I switch on, it gives me the volume. No. So I have this basic, uh, this uh, tiling of this terrain, but I need to define the areas of grasslands and uh, soil and dirt. So for that, select your landscape mode, foliage, and last option is stain. Go to paint. Now you have these three options. Rock is by default applied everywhere, but we have switched on the preview of rock, so that's why rock is visible. So now suppose I want grass. Uh, I want to paint grass. So I can just paint it. It will take some time to compile. Just see. Now I can start to and just paint things very easily. Intensity can control. You can see you have strength, circular motion, smooth fall off, radius. Everything can control. You can smooth it out. If suppose you want to like smooth it out, you can do that. Like blurring the edges, you can do that. Paint directly. You can paint it nicely. So 
it's kind of a kind of a vertex painting okay now if you zoom in you can see this tiling of the grass is way too huge so I have to go to my main material. This one, double click it. It will open this instance, and now I have this grass tiling. I can reduce it. See, I can reduce it and make it like a really nice greeny patch. This looks decent. Similar manner. Suppose I want to paint this dirt. I just have to click on this layer, and I can. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So I just have to click on this dot and then start painting. Again, you can see it, that section become uh, gray, gray, and it will start uh, uh, compiling. You can see compiling shaders twenty six. It will compile and it will give you the appearance. So it can be anything. It can be anything. It can be uh, like dirt. Can be rock. Can be. Your uh, foliage, anything, whatever you want to paint, you can do that. Okay. So you can see, like this, you can paint very easily. You want to blend it nicely. You just simply smooth it out. It becomes, it makes it blending is very nice and clean. This is how you generate like big, huge terrain. But there are. Like multiple ways to uh, create terrain as well. So if one uh, like initially I showed you two techniques to create the terrain. One is manually sculpting. One is using uh, a height map. Now uh, texturing also there are two different techniques. One is you manually uh, select the area and uh, place all the texture, paint all the texture wherever you want based on your requirement. That is something what you can do. And there's one more technique, auto blending. It will automatically blend all these things and create and generate all these things. So let's let's take, go to this material first. Our material. But somehow I feel this dirt is not very nice. I feel this dirt is like really ugly. And it's and one more thing, this is peculiarity. Here you see it's like quite shiny. It makes it white, whitish. So I don't want it. Press one from keyboard, left mouse button. So a uh, constant. I'm turning this to specular. Make it point one because uh, usually landscape terrain they don't shine. So point one is like almost black, ninety percent black. So it stop shining. Stop being shiny. And then I can connect this to. And go and check. It will start compiling. That glossiness will go from your terrain. Compiling. See that whitish glossiness effect was. Now it's gone. Because it should be like this. It should not be like uh, like usually. Most of the time, we don't manipulate uh, specular. We control everything with the help of roughness. But There will be cases where we use specular. By default, specular is 0.5, so we need to reduce it to 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5. 
based on our uh, like uh, requirement and as you see it looks much uh, better and much believable now previously it was way too whitish in color so this is like a one technique and this texture somehow i don't like it so let me go and let's see i guess i have a nice rocky texture or something texture yesterday only saw somewhere this is bark let me search for rock Yeah, it's a rocky surface. So if I want, I can simply replace this one in my actual this thing. Click on this arrow, replace it. Similarly, select the normal, go back, select the normal, and replace it. This will replace material. So that uh, yellowish, dirty, ugly color will go. I'll get this some darkish value. So it will start compiling once again. And this one is bit shiny. I can see like this is bit shiny. So what if I don't want it to be shiny? Or I want to control it. I can uh, use the scalar parameter, multiply, and do it. So right now I don't want to like, go into those depths. I just use this as the the thing, same as this. So I can use it directly. Compiling. Yeah, I guess it's done. It's kind of done. You can see. And now I can see this is like we took uh, much of styling. I can see this definitely. And double click and open and reduce the styling. So let's see. I have nice blending like this. I can create this entire tiling and blend everything manually. This is a manual technique. If you like add manually, you have to sculpt or you have to paint few things here and there. But there is a technique we can automated uh, automatically generate this thing. So that technique is I'll show you the technique for that technique. I just have to like in this exact thing. I just delete this one. In that thing, I just have to add a world aligned blend. The blending should be based on the world alignment, like literal meaning. So this is something what I have to add to my texture. So for that, what I'll do is I'll go to my main material, which is this thing up. Then I'll create a World align blend and you know this camera. Uh, yes, you can see under this world align blend. Click on this, you'll get this parameter, this node. You'll get this node, and in this node, like uh, uh, this blend. What I have to do, I have to create a function for this, this blend bias and blend sharpness. Control right click, distance right click, promote to parameters. Right click of blend bias, promote to parameters. So these two, <clears throat> so you can put any value here, like maybe uh, blend uh, bias, maybe 20 or maybe 12, and sharpness can be your 10 or something. 
or maybe 60 or whatever you want to uh, add. You can add some value random. Uh, these are parameters, so later I can modify it. Obviously, like I can modify this thing very easily. So for this, what I have to do is I have one, two, three color. So let's uh, create a linear interpolation. In linear interpolation, what happens? A is section A1, B is section 2, and you blend these two textures based on an alpha map. So you can see there's an alpha output, drag, drop to alpha. So this is your A, this is your B, right? But you can see you have a C texture as well. So how, what to do with that? So why, what, I, what I have to do is, I have to create one more linear interpolation. And this will come as A. And this will come as B. And for this blending, I need a separate world align. I don't want the exact same alignment. Or I, if I want, I can control, like connect this as well. That also works perfectly. But this will, uh, what will happen? This will give you same alpha output to both of them. So best thing will be control W and create a separate world align for this and name them as underscore zero one. underscore zero one or zero two anything just make sure parameter name is separate because this is otherwise if you modify this this also get modified get modified easily connect these things here and this to so now i have to connect these to this layer blend so you can see here we have blended the same thing with this. So you have to connect this to this layer blend, otherwise you won't be able to paint anything. So this is last one. This is uh, this will act as my yeah, okay. Huh. I can do this with the help of layer without the help of layer blend as well, but I'll use that. So let's connect this to dot. This is my layer to grass. I can connect this to wrong directly to this. So let's generate this. So let's copy this, control W, and move it down. Like exact same thing I can do with here as well. One. B, C, C, D. So this will give this output, this will give this output. Most probably I have to switch these two. Uh, that's what I think. Okay, let's, uh, and I, if I want, I can just simply control W one more time. Keep it here. So that roughness also, I can do the exact same thing. This is like this is as a B. So right now this name exact same. So these two names can be same because uh, whatever you modify here and whatever you modify uh, this styling should be exact same. So either I can keep all these parameters or I can just simply delete these extra parameters which are not required. Now select this one, connect it to your blend bias. Connect this, oh sorry. And this one also, connect this to blend bias. So one parameter that controls all of them. That will make your life way easier. Blend sharpness, oh sorry. Is a mistake. It should be go to blend sharpener and this should go to blend bias. And this is blend bias should go to blend sharpener. Uh, wrong. 
ce soir. Similarly, these two, this is to sharpness and bias. If I want, I can drag this to here and then create it. Sorry. Uh, sharpness and then bias. So if you see, gradually it's becoming uh, really complicated and complex. Just see this. Save it, then go to your landscape. You have modified this thing, it's basically compiling now. It should show me a preview. It's blending, so let's go here and landscape paint. Uh, there's an option to follow. And these two, you can see these two are gray, not visible. So that's why that thing is visible here now. So for that, what I have to do is I have to go here and make sure, select the texture and uh, mix my value. So oh, this is I don't want for it. Like that. This one, texture. And sample source should be wrapped for all the textures. If I, if I want, I can select all the textures together and then put this to wrap. And then save it once again. If this is something you have to do it, otherwise you won't understand and it will become very difficult. And uh, like uh, one week we can extend, the next week we'll continue over this entire thing. But uh, after that, we'll, uh, we have to start environment two. So that time it will become very problem, very, very problematic. Okay. Just removing this texture from this. Delete. I'm deleting everything so that there's no history for anything here. Then I'll go to my material. Material, this one is my material, save. All select this and apply this one here. Landscape material. Right now you can see the something is there plus with blended. Okay. Save it. Save it. It probably exists, so that's why it's going over to overwrite it. Save, save all. So here I can see this graph thing, graph and dot is not visible. So that means my this property is not working. So what I have to do is to this is connected fine. So instead of connecting this, I have to connect this one here and this one to B. So now I can see the graph. It's just clearly visible. And save it. So with the, all the uh, like roughness and normal as well. It will compile. So 
it's showing all this entire graph. Only the normal is not tiling, but normal isn't uh, visible. So, um, yeah, this two bias and these these things I have to modify now. So let's see bias. I can increase. Then sharpness. I can increase. Uh, it started to blend. So see the areas. See, it started to generate sharpness. I can reduce. So it will generate everything based on this. Nicely, the third one why it's not visible, it should be visible, and the tiling also has to control. Mm. The distance. This could go to A and this go to B. And the function was the length of normal and uh, value is normal. Okay. I think I found blank to start to start. Yeah, Explicit no more. Correct. Even if it's done like this, it doesn't make any difference. Ah. So for normal, I can use explicit normal, and for uh, diffuse, I can use normal alpha. So it will generate that effect. Let's see. We'll just save it. Loading. Let's see. So it started to generate everything, and even in between this normal, it's small, small graph effect. And you can see this movement reasonably, and depending upon the distance from the camera, it generates. And I have this like dark patches also here.
sharp plus second degree or in three. So blend everything nicely. So like this, I can blend it. And after this, suppose I want to paint something, I can select on that and paint it also. It's not automatic. The second one, I'm just connecting. So I can see there is some error. So you have to check your material again and again and based on that your requirements have to modify things accordingly. It's, compli it's compiling again. Yeah. So it's compiled. Now I have to see I have three different distance. If I want to change something and paint it. Oh sorry, paint. I was supposed to click on paint. I was painting LA pressing is smooth and painting it. That's it wasn't working. So you can see I can paint individually also. And plus if I want to modify something, I can do that also. So it gives you way more flexibility and it uh, like it becomes quite easy to create this kind of huge landscape very easily and quickly. To combine things, and similarly, if now I can go to foliage and import any of the foliage and create those things, uh, just mega scan. I have a mega scan mirror pack. So, if I go to static mesh, you can see uh, just all of meshes here. So, any one of them, I can just simply use it to create my foliage. Let's select LOD zero. LOD, I just want LOD zero. LOD zero. And grass also I want LOD zero. <coughs> because LOD zero have more details. So I want to use more detail one. This is the key. For these and all, there's so many. So I can just select any one of them, like all of them, any one of them. I'm not using all but uh, LOD. I'm just using few LOD. Loading. So by the time I can just mark the name. Let's see. It's loading. So basically, I can drag drop this foliage and paint my foliage. So make it a nice uh, jungle or maybe a pathway or maybe a landscape. I can create this thing very easily. So start with a small uh, landscape, small thing.
loading how much it's loading so i have selected eight models such as i have selected eight models that's why it's so much so long Finally, drag drop here. Everything is here. Select all of them. Randomize the scale. Maybe two. I'm just like quickly doing it. One to two, and then increase the best size. This is the spirit option. I can change two. See. It gives you nice shadow and realistic looking foliage within no time. If I paint this thing quickly, and these are all like instances. It makes the life way easier, and you can paint it really fast. And based on your distance from the camera, it automatically reduces and increases the uh, like scale. Just a quickly paint. I have just two minutes, so just paint it quickly so that I can show you three views. Nicely paint, fill it nicely. So let's go to play and play. Hit play. So now you can see. All these grasses, grass, everything. You can run around and check. It's from any angle, you see. And now this this looks quite nice and realistic and good. And they have slight movement as well. So like this, you can create all these things really quickly. And it looks quite a huge environment. See, like all the edges everywhere. See, this looks so nice. So, using the physics, I cannot jump. It makes your life so easy. You can create this thing really nicely. So like this, you can create foliage, and if you want to scatter rocks, you can instead of uh, having uh, plants here, you can uh, drag drop some rocks, some debris, some uh, uh, the thing branches, twigs, and all, and you can paint that as well, make your scene better. You can do that very easily. You can see there's so many things we have. Anything I can paint there. Like suppose I want to paint some rocks, I can just simply drag and drop this rock into the foliage, foliage, and make sure select all of them and switch off. It's not activate, uh, deactivated, and then paint uh, like any supposed to this rock will be paint. Just try one at least. So there's not enough time to close automatically. Like 